Hello Zero K fans, this is Shadow Fury 33 bringing you a match between Sackdoth and El Torero on Kaleo, and I apologize for not having any casts recently, I'm currently moving out. So I've been busy taking care of that, and I actually wasn't entirely sure whether or not I would have internet relatively soon, and that's why I'm doing a cast now, so for just a last minute cast from my old place, but I... I do actually have some good news. My internet will be hooked up on Monday, so I really wouldn't have any wouldn't have had any delays. But let's get on to the game. Probably don't care too much about my personal details, but you do care about watching this game being played, I imagine. So, get it started. El Torero is in the bottom right corner. He's very quickly going for a metal extractor, while Sackdoth in the top left corner also going for a quick metal extractor. And Cloaky Bot Factor. There we go. So. Not sure what El Torero is going for factory on a map this size. Probably Cloaky, maybe... Maybe Shields. No, definitely Cloaky. Okay, both players going for Cloaky Bot Factory. And this is a very hilly map. We haven't really seen much of this map, actually. It's... Well, as lab in the center. I don't believe that's actually non-pathable. It's just a menacing-looking texture. And as you can see, a lot of hills around the map as well. Just... Makes it hard for vehicles to work out, but bots work just fine. This is Glaive here. Check out its pathing. It has no real issues, except it's a little bit slow getting to the center area. But everywhere else, it's fine. And El Torero is also getting a Glaive saying over to the bottom. Both players going to the southwest corner of the map, expecting the other to have expanded there. Just double checking. And. Or actually. No, I believe there's only two start boxes on this map. The way Spring handles start positions is that you have set start boxes per player. So, they probably were expecting the opponent to expand here, and neither player did. Same thing with the northeast corner, though Sackdoth has not sent anything to scout that, that yet, and neither player is expanding to those either. More Glaives coming up from El Torero, and both players pretty much going for the same setup with basic defenses. Nothing too different. The only difference is Laser Turret for Sackdoth, while Defender for El Torero. So, El Torero probably expects. He might expect fast air. Having having the laser turret isn't that much different than the defenders against Glaze. The only difference is that defenders have a limit on the missiles they can fire in a short period of time. They can only fire three missiles without having to recharge. And as you can see, these little green dots here represent whether or not they have missiles. And if they don't, then... Oh, well, I don't see any right now. But if they don't, then they will not be able to fire. They have to take a little while to refill those missiles. While laser turrets can fire continuously, which means they are quite a bit better against swarms of raiders, but defenders against single raiders are just fine, and against any air starts are also just fine. And Sactoth is very quickly expand. He's very aggressive in the expansion to the center. El Torero also going for expansion to the center, but not quite as quickly. See, Sactoth has a four metal advantage and 27 power advantage as well, though that's somewhat independent of this. But if but a four metal advantage is not that. He is going for this, and El Torero trying to punish him for it, taking out one of his rectors and his metal extractor that was under construction halfway there. Sackdoth in their hand. He is going for a very heavy raid, enough glaives to get past the defender. This is what I was talking about. The defender will not be able to handle this many glaives. However, with glaive support, it will be fine. There's Sackdoth's raiding party will go down, but El Torero needs these glaives to do it. Really, it's the glaives with defender support. And the battle is not getting joined. Sackdoth wisely staying outside of the range of the defenders. He is fully aware of what that is. And that is going to allow him to get rid of this melee strider and the late laser turret before it goes down. But the commander will take out the glaze before they can deal any meaningful damage. That melee extractor is a pretty decent loss, though El Torero is able to reclaim those glaives, get that back. And Sackdoth fully aware of what... So that's not what I wanted to do. What I wanted to do was show this. So Sackdoth, he is aware of where El Torero's commander is. Not much else, though. Well, El Torero has no radar. Oh, he has a radar, but he doesn't have radar really into anything Sackdoth is doing. Everything Sackdoth is doing is either too far away or in radar shadow. So that radar is not really well positioned over, well, right here, in the back of the base. That does not help much. But, but no matter, it's not the biggest deal. If he sets another radar up closer, it'll be fine. It's just... It, it's a defensive radar, but he needs to set up an offensive one. And he has! Okay, so he is fine. And as we can see, it has... 
it has pretty good vision of everything Zacton's doing near the crater. Which is the best that can really be hoped for at this point. El Torero cannot safely... He could risk some radar around the map. Not a terrible idea, but he can't safely expand those places. And both players have been just pushing glaives this entire time. No warriors, no rockers. Oh, there is a tick coming up from Zakdoth. Very important to point out, because that will be coming up, I'm sure. He does have an... A warrior is up for El Torero, and these glaives here are wisely avoiding that. While towards the south, El Torero is preparing for possibly an attack. It doesn't look like he's preparing for much more than defense, though. The glaives are spread out such that they will catch any incoming units and surround them nicely. But no units are coming in from that side, from Sackdoth. Both players are pretty much just dividing up the map at this point. Neither of them are... Although Sackdoth does have his commander rather up front. These glaives probably won't do the trick, but a couple warriors will. Two, two or three warriors do a great job against commanders, and this is a level zero commander as well. No upgrades whatsoever. On the other hand, El Torero's commander has been... Oh, it's Commander Junior doesn't even have upgrades. It just exists. Sackdoth, though, is ahead somewhat in economy, and... Oh, actually, I was had this on. He is ahead in economy. He is entirely based off of metal extractors. We see that Sackdoth does have more metal extractors going than El Torero does. El Torero doesn't have this top corner of the map, and Sackdoth pretty much has the bottom left corner completely his. Sackdoth very much ahead in terms of economy. And that is going to pay off very shortly. As we see, Sackdoth has... Well, he's not building additional factories. He's going to... He has a Rector just helping to build up, getting more Rockos up. While El Torero goes to raid, and Sackdoth just pushing a defender line forward to get rid of these light laser turrets, the Lotuses. And El Torero being pushed back heavily. It looks like Sackdoth's probably going to be going for the kill within the next couple minutes. We have... How many... Rockos that he had. He has 10 Rockos on the field, along with 20 Glaives. Yeah, he is definitely doing quite well. On the other hand, El Torero also has 20 Glaives, though they are... Wait, does he actually have 20 Glaives? That can't be right. No, this is selecting all the Glaives from both players. So, there are 20 Glaives in total on the field. Most of which, all but about 4 of which, are Sacktoths. So I'd say Sacktoths pretty much just a few minutes before he takes this game, and once that happens... Although, oh, nice tick usage by El Torero, getting rid of, well, getting those glaives out of the way. Not quite evening up the game, though. Getting into the race of the laser turret, and that laser turret is able to take out the glaives, so Sakta's harassment somewhat stopped short, but only somewhat. Towards the north, a couple warriors, or a warrior and a commander, are coming forward to try to deal with this, but they haven't got much to work with. The Rockos will be able to take out the warrior before it's able to deal any meaningful damage. And with that, I don't see much more for El Torero on the field. That'll help him. He is getting a Zeus, but I think at this point that's probably too much money for too little benefit. With the amount of Rockos up, more Glaze is the best bet, possibly with a Tick. Like, tick support with Glaze. The Tick will be able to dodge the missiles fairly well. They are slow-moving missiles, and they will overshoot the Tick most likely. But El Torero is not going for that at all. His factory entirely for Glaze. Not entirely for Glaze, sorry, entirely for Zeus's. While Sackdoth, on the other hand, he is getting Rectors and Rockos. That's pretty much all he's got, and that's all he'll need, because El Torero has surrendered. That is the game! So I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll be back with another one shortly. So stay tuned.